Let's welcome in our friends. Former Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley, is with us. We're also joined by Newsmax host Allison Maloney. Hogan, what are you expecting today in the Granite State? I've talked to my friends on the ground there, politicos I've worked with for decades um, in New Hampshire, and they predict Donald Trump by double digits uh, mm. in the state, tracking for the most part with the polls. Obviously, New Hampshire is kind of odd in the sense that Iowa and New Hampshire never really ha declare the same winner. So if Donald Trump were to win here, not only would that be significant from the, for the race moving forward, it would buck a lot more history that Donald Trump has already <laughs> continued Never happened to buck. before. Never happened yeah. before. And so um, I am looking forward to, to some interesting numbers though with Joe Biden because he's having his own little kerfuffle in New Hampshire, if you will, and, and I know we'll get into that. But the fact that there is a big write-in campaign for Joe Biden is pushing a lot of Democrats to the polls. The Boston Globe came out and said, hey, Democrats, get to the polls and vote for Nikki Haley. Right. We don't like Nikki Haley, but we hate Donald Trump. Vote for Nikki. So there is a move to try and get people to the polls on the Democrat side that could ultimately vote for Nikki in some form or fashion. So I'm looking to see that trend. But for the most part, if Donald Trump wins this, I really do think this thing's over because he'll be 2-0, and 3-0 and after Nevada because Nikki's not even on the ballot. And he'll win Nikki's home state by 30 points. And then everyone else is 0 and 4. She'll drop out before South Carolina. I think, I think way so too, too embarrassing. And you're from that state. It, it's, you know, there's but. a difference between being embarrassed and humiliated. Right. You lose by 30 points in your own home state, that's humiliation, and she's not coming back from it. But that. as we've been talking about all week, New Hampshire is very interesting because of those 40% that are undeclared. How do you think that plays a role in that? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting just to see who these independents vote for, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got this write in, um, you know, that's a well funded write in campaign for Biden, but then you have. Uh, you've got Dean Phillips, right? So he's running, um, and he could pull. Um, he's saying that he's got support, obviously, from Democrats, independents, and even yeah. Republicans. So if we, it'd be interesting to see who goes for him, um, because that can determine, you know, if Trump is the nominee moving forward, how much does he need to focus on these independents because mm -hmm. of all the other issues? So I think it'll be interesting to see exactly where the numbers lie as far as who these independents vote for. Yeah, does Dixville Notch mean anything to you? Look, I give people credit for going out and voting at yeah. midnight. Well, it's a big um, tradition. They, you know, yeah. It brings in the world's cool. media yeah. every four years. Yeah. It's a great really tradition. Cool. So John Kasich won in Dixville Notch mm -hmm. back in 2016. There were only five people that voted back then. So somebody moved to Dixville Notch yes. uh, <laughs> over the last yeah. eight years. Because um, the there, there six voter. people voted last night. <laughs> two voted for Donald Trump. So he apparently lost two votes yeah. over the last eight years. It was a big deal in the old days because they'd vote right at 12.01 mm -hmm. and then all of the newspapers across the state would print those results and people waking up would say, wow, look at that. Maybe I'll vote yeah, for... Yeah, it would set the tone. You yeah. know, vote for so-and-so. Uh, does that have any, any impact today, I don't think do you think? so. I think a lot of people know who they're planning on voting for. Some people may be keeping it a secret, but the polls, you know, as Hogan mentioned, I mean, Trump is up significantly. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting. If Trump wins, wins um, New Hampshire, that will be very interesting. And, you know, I know Nikki Haley said that she's not going to drop out out if she loses, but... Well, Ron DeSantis said that a week ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. yeah. So what does that <laughs> yeah, mean, right? She, and Charlotte, you said it. Yeah. He's the de facto nominee if he wins yeah. today. So Insider Advantage um, conducted a poll after Ron DeSantis announced late Sunday mm -hmm. that he's dropping out of the race. And this is fascinating. They got it together. So 850 New Hampshire voters uh, were polled late Sunday afternoon. And you look at Trump's numbers there. Yeah. Almost a 30-point lead saying, Hogan, that over Nikki Haley. People on the ground. And that's post-DeSantis dropping out. What do you make of that? Yeah, those are big numbers, regardless of how the, the media, the left, will try to spin this for Nikki Haley. Um, what I've seen here with Donald Trump is so significant mm -hmm. because what he did in Iowa really did set the tone. And now what he's poised to do in New Hampshire, which no one has ever done, won both of those states, just solidifies how much of the GOP base wants a second term of Donald Trump, a return to the America First policies that improve the lives of all Americans. And so... Regardless of what you think about Nikki or Ron or Vivek or Tim Scott or anybody else, the fact is it's still Donald Trump's party. He's still the one who's the, the preemptive, presumptive mm. nominee. He is the front runner by massive margins. And it's just going to be very difficult for anyone to break through that, not to mention someone like Nikki, who is more establishment, more of the globalist side of the party, which is diminishing every single day, thanks to people like, I would argue, Mike Huckabee, then Rick Santorum, and then Donald Trump, who really grew that base and made MAGA a real thing.